before we talk about specific techniques for panel data analysis, it's useful to take a look at the big picture. Why do we want to model effects over time? Why do we want to model x at time 1, y at time 2? And why do we want to sometimes model the effects of y from time 1 to y at time 2? Let's take a look at this, uh, one example that I like to use when I start discussing how to make causal claims using quantitative data. So this example comes from Talos Elma 500 list which is a list of 500 largest companies published by the Finnish Talous Elämä business magazine. And in 2005, there was this big headline that the average ROA of women-led companies was large, was uh, 4.7 percentage points higher than for men-led companies. And this is of course a big difference. And people wanted to interpret this empirical finding as evidence that it is actually the female, we, female CEO or the woman leader who causes the profitability differences. So there were calls for having more women in CEO and in board and management team positions after this finding. But this is just an uh, observation. It's not directly evidence of causality. So what do we actually need to make a causal claim? We need to understand the three conditions for causality and this observation satisfies the association condition. So we see an X and Y are related and that's one condition for causality. We also need to establish direction of influence and elimination of rival explanations. I'm not concerned about the elimination of rival explanations in this video, but let's focus on the direction of influence. How we normally deal with direction of influence is that we measure the cause before the effect. So we measure X, the CO gender, before the ROA. Then for elimination of rival explanations, we can have statistical controls or we can do an experiment, but that's beyond this video. So let's take a look at measure X before Y and uh, why would we like to do that? So basically it would take this kind of thing. So we have time one CO gender, we have time two ROA, and if this is all the data that we had, the only thing that we could do is simply run a regression analysis. We just can't do anything else if we don't have more data. But quite often we actually do have more data. So we could have more observations. We could have ROA at time three and CO gender at time two. So what do we do with this data? Do we just put all the data together and run a regression analysis? So just stack the data, apply regression analysis. That could be done, but there are some challenges to it. First of all, if we think about the determinants on, on return of return on assets, so what determines companies' return on assets, it's probably determined, for example, whether the company has factories or, or something other than really assets. And assets tend to persist over time. So we have these unmodeled causes U of, of uh, profitability differences tend to be autocorrelated. So there's autocorrelation from time two to time three. Not only that, but there tends to be also persistent differences between companies. So for example, companies in asset heavy industries tend to be always less profitable on ROA than companies that are in industries that don't have that much assets. So we have unobserved firm level effects called, uh, referred to as unobserved heterogeneity. And if we just simply look at the error term, then this would be intra-class correlation for the error term by the firm. So is this a big problem for regression analysis? No, if we apply cluster robust standard errors. So this is the simple case. If we're just interested in the effect of CEO, gender and ROA of X and Y, we simply control for the time dimension using cluster robust standard errors. And we are going to be fine as long as the sample size is large enough. But this is uh, sometimes we want to do something more complicated. So uh, what if we have this scenario that we're saying that actually uh, ROA now affects the future values. So we have lack dependent variable as a predictor of the current variable. And this is where things get complicated. So this is called the dynamic panel model because the variable depends on its paths values. And uh, I have a general video about lack dependent variables that discusses whether and when you should apply this kind of relationships. I'm just going to give an overview at the end of the video why I think these kind of relationships and when they would make sense. 
but quite often we, we have more ROAs. So we don't have ROAs from just time two and time three. We have that from time one as well. So we can add those predictors and we pr probably have CO genders. And if we say that the ROA persists over time, then we would typically also model that well CO gender persists over time as well. So we can um, check if it's the CO gender that causes the ROA or whether it's actually a uh, ROA that causes CO gender. So this is a very common model used for, for panel data, typically estimated using structural ecosystem modeling techniques. This is called the cross-lagged panel model. So the idea is that it is cross-lagged. It's lagged because we have lag dependent variable explaining its future values and it's crossed because ROA affects gender, gender affects ROA. So these, these lines cross here. So this is a cross lag time model. But then again, if we have these unobserved courses of ROA, how realistic is it to assume that they are not correlated? Not very realistic. So, so if we put out a correlation here, this would be identified because we could use econometrics techniques and these ROA and CO gender from the first time point could be used as instrumental variables for these future values. But if we think that unobserved causes of, of U correlate over time, then uh, we would also logically have to add these arrows to the model. So whatever is the causing, causing U, uh, ROA at time one, if it persists over time, it also causes ROA at, at time one. So time one and time two would be correlated. So, and that's an endogeneity problem. And we really can't deal with that problem with just these data that we have here. Then we can also add, consider another case. So, so if we have permanent level effects here, this is something that we would model with, for example, GLS uh, random effects model. But how realistic is it that the Fermi level effects that affect ROA at time three and time two don't affect time one? So, so we can do Fermi level effects two and have them affect ROA at the first time point and that gives us the correlated random effects model. So this kind of brings together many of the different modeling approaches that I've discussed before in the context of multi-level modeling. So we can do uh, these lag dependent variables and permanent effects. This causes some complexities in the analysis if you want to do it uh, using e econometric techniques, but for structural ecosystem modeling using wide form data, this would be identified if you have three observations, three time points or more, and that wouldn't be a problem. What if we have autocorrelation here in the error terms? Then again, we would ha be, uh, have problems because how would we deal with that endogeneity here? So, so this is the most general problem and uh, general case. We have error terms that autocorrelate. We have firm level effects and we have ROA or, or dependent variable that affects itself over time. And we can uh, deal with the firm level effects easily or it can be dealt with. Whether that's easy or not depends a bit on what else you include in the model. But it's pretty much always doable. So what we have here now is that uh, how do we deal with this endogeneity problem? We are saying that uh, causes of unobserved causes of U correlate and R ROA or, or Y dependent variable affects itself over time. So how do we know that these, the correlation with the ROA here is because of this causal effect or because of this correlation between unmodeled causes. We really don't because uh, this ROA and CO gender can be used as instruments for this model because they too have to correlate with the error term. In practice we need to make decisions and, and the decision that we make is that we assume that these one of these paths is autocorrelation path is zero. And that is sufficient to identify the model. So when would we make such assumption? It depends on what is the nature of your dependent variable. If your nature of dependent variable is something that is accumulated over time, like for example assets, then assets this year is simply whatever we had last year plus or minus the change. Then uh, this uh, having this R arrow from, from uh, ROA to ROA, the dependent variable to dependent variable, would make sense, would be more important than have this autocorrelation between error term. But if the variable is something that is realized over and over again, 
So sales tend to correlate over time, but it's not because sales from past time cause this time, rather it's because the determinants of sales at a particular year correlate with the determinants of sale from the previous year sales. And, and then we would use this uh, correlated error term and would leave this uh, effect from the lag dependent variable out from the model. So this is the, uh, the trade-off that we have to make. Of course, it's possible that we use external instruments. So we have instrumental variable, we instrument the first uh, values here, but finding those instruments, uh, particularly if you want to find them outside the model, that would be tricky. There are some, some techniques that rely heavily on instrumental variables, but most simpler, te simpler techniques don't use instruments and simply leave out either this autocorrelation here or this autoregression here. This kind of modeling framework that frameworks that build up from the simple model to our complex models are of course not my invention. So here is one recent one from organizational research methods and, and this is a series of two articles that go through in a way similar model building approach. They start with a simple model, they consider what complex things we, what things we need to add in certain scenarios, the model grows more complex and then they discuss the estimation techniques. This article is, this set of articles is pretty advanced but it, it's a good starting point or kind of like a good reference point on the literature of these estimation of these dynamic panel models that can effect, have effects over time. So this is a good starting point also for trying to understand how these models are specified and estimated and why.